And so now we can move on to some other really cool paintings that we're so lucky to have in here. Uh, we'll start with this portrait of George Bush Sr. Well, actually, we'll start with the Reagan portrait right next to it. Uh, Reagan on his white horse. It's called an American hero. He was commissioned by the Republican Party uh, to paint this painting, and he was actually hired out to, to go and photograph Reagan at his ranch in, in, uh, in California. And so Reagan comes out on this really, really dying looking horse, on his last leg, kind of a mule of a horse. And so all the photographs he took just looked terrible. I'll walk over here. And so he, he knew he couldn't use any of the photographs that he had taken. So what he decided to do was go to his scrap file and he found a beautiful picture of Gene Autry on his horse. <laughs> Cut off Gene Autry's head and put Reagan's head on top of it. And uh, when he presented it to President Reagan, uh, the president told him that it was his favorite portrait uh, in his collection. And uh, they owned it for a long time and Nancy recently donated it to the LSU uh, Foundation. So it hangs at, at LSU in Baton Rouge. Um, and from that experience, uh, Vice President Bush uh, asked if he could paint him in a casual setting uh, with his grandkids. So that's what this, this painting is. And President Bush uh, still has this hanging in his office in Houston at all times, and it hung, uh, hung in the White House during his reign, not reign, during his presidency. <laughs> I'm, used to, I'm so used to Mardi Gras, you know, you, when you got the king of Mardi Gras, it's there, it's the reign, it's very different. Uh, and President Bush was, was very, very generous. He, he loaned this, ex this painting for this exhibit just so everyone in Amarillo could, could see it. And he wrote this beautiful letter to go with it, uh, thanking my dad for it. And um, I love a uh, uh, great story about this painting uh, that George always likes to tell is he usually doesn't say no to presidents, but when he delivered the painting to President Bush, he asked, well, maybe you could stick Barbara in there. And George looked at it and said, no, she won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's 10 of his, he now has 16 grandchildren, so we're going to need to do a second painting, I think. Yeah. Sure he's up to it. <laughs> and so, uh, another great painting that we have in this exhibit is the, the Gorbachev painting. Uh, President Reagan invited a, a Louisiana delegation to go to Moscow in 1988 for the Moscow summit. And uh, my dad was part of that, that delegation and was bringing a bunch of paintings. So he decided that he should paint Gorbachev as a sister painting to the, to the Reagan painting. And so he painted them, he was, uh, ran as a man of the people. And so there's a, he's extending his arm out to, to welcome the, the rest of the world to come to Moscow. And when the painting got there and the Russians saw it, they were very offended by it because they said it looks like he's begging. <laughs> and they saw the Reagan painting on his beautiful white horse and they said, why isn't Mr. Gorbachev on a horse? So my dad said, I didn't know Mr. Gorbachev owned a horse. And they said, well, we hope that President Reagan would give Mr. Gorbachev a horse. <laughs> but it, it started some kind of uh, almost international incident. They actually took down all of the paintings from where they were displayed and hid them for a while because they were so offended by this painting. And when they finally gave them back, um, they didn't want to at first, but they said, you know, just go back to America, we'll, we'll, we'll ship the paintings back to you and be no problem. So he luckily didn't trust them, and so he went into where they were uh, being displayed in the middle of the night and actually took all of these 20 paintings off their stretchers and rolled them up in a big, big roll. Um, imagine all these canvases just rolled up and gave them to some reporters that he knew who were flying back on Air Force Two and they actually hid these two paintings in a beer cooler. <laughs> and so that's how all 20 paintings got back to America. So it's a pretty cool little story. Um, some other portraits we have in this room are back here. Uh, there's the, the little boy wearing the Kiss Me I'm Cajun shirt. That was a, 
a shirt my dad saw in Houston. And so the, the little boy is actually my brother. And uh, he thought it'd be a cool subject for a painting. Um, and then here's one of my other favorite, painting, favorite paintings. It's called Paint Me Back Into Your Life. This is actually me as a little kid. And, uh, I had to pose in overalls. I don't know where I had overalls. Um, but posed with this little painting and, and he drew it, sketched it out on the canvas and told me uh, to paint my own oak tree on the canvas itself with this, in this uh, canvas I'm holding. And so I painted my own oak tree and it was Christmas time. So I put red stockings uh, on the tree and then he painted the whole rest of the painting to match, match my painting. And just uh, a couple more paintings to get through. The, uh, the Clinton portrait, you can also mention. He was uh, commissioned to paint this painting for Clinton's second inauguration. This was the official painting and they made posters of it um, for President Clinton. He, by this time, wanted to be painted with the blue dog, but I didn't know why he wanted to be, or didn't think he needed to be painted with the blue dog, but President Clinton uh, loved the blue dog so much that he wanted it to be in his, in his portrait. Uh, then we get to no relation to the Blue Dog Democrats, by the way. Uh, they actually kind of stole that term from us. Um, in Louisiana, we had Yellow Dog Democrats. And some Louisiana congressional delegates decided that uh, the Yellow Dog Democrats were now choked by the policies of the current administration that they turned blue. And so they spread the word that they would be this uh, conservative wing of the Democratic Party, and they thought they were doing my dad a favor by calling themselves Blue Dogs. And so we, we try to distance ourselves from any real political affiliation. We, we paint for both sides, um, <laughs> Democrats and Republicans by painting, so it can't be too, uh, too political. Uh, and we'll go around the corner over here and I'll talk about uh, a, a cool program that we did. It was called Blue Dog Relief. For, for those of you who can't see this, uh, I'm talking about this, this print over here. Uh, the night that 9-11 happened, my dad was in California, and just like all of us, was so struck by the events, uh, he didn't know what to do, so he, he just went back to his easel just to kind of get his emotions out on canvas. And he painted a blue dog with an American flag on the background and thought the blue dog looked a little bit too happy. Uh, so what he did was he whited out the dog. And as he was whiting out the blue, he realized that this said something else. This was kind of saying how we were attacked and, and it was a terrible day and just kind of represented how he felt at that moment and how we all felt. So he finished the painting and said, I'm gonna print a thousand of these versions and sell them for $500 a piece and give all the money to the Red Cross. So. Within about two weeks, he had sold out and gave $500,000 to the Red Cross. And he learned an important lesson. If he wouldn't have limited it, he probably could have sold a lot more. So on the other side of this wall, uh, when Katrina hit New Orleans, he decided to do a, a relief print for Katrina Relief. And we left it in open edition for about a year or two and uh, raised about $2.5 million through those series that we gave to uh, charities around New Orleans. And then that brings us to probably the final painting I'll talk about before I'll take some questions, is this painting right here. It's called Dependence. It's about 10 years old now, but it's kind of the, the theoretical end of the Blue Dog series. Um, just as with his older Cajun works of the swamps and oak trees, he considered himself an abstract artist who was very obsessed with color, shape, and design. So here it is throwing in your face that the blue dog is not a dog at all, but it's just a, a mix of colors and shape that come together. If you've never seen a blue dog before, you would never think this was a blue dog. But for him, it's all about how these colors and shapes come together. So when you separate it on the four separate canvases, it really um, shows you exactly where 
the, the ends of the blue dog can go. So even though it's completely unrecognizable, people still call it the blue dog. And that's about it for my tour. Thank you so much for coming. Um, does anybody have any questions? I'd love to try answering them. Would you comment on how the Blue Dog uh, series was accepted by, or rejected, or reacted to by right. the Cajuns? Well, yeah. People in Louisiana, you know, they said, George, you know, you've got a successful 25 year career. You're painting presidents, you're on a roll. Why would you paint a blue dog? You're crazy. Uh, but he said, you know, just from early on when they said he was crazy for painting an oak tree, that this blue dog was saying something else to him. It was something special was happening here. And he wanted to see where the dream would go. You know, every, every painting uh, is a new problem. It's a, it's a new thing to solve. And so as you progress in a series, you keep challenging yourself, and you keep growing, and you keep learning. So he doesn't know where the blue dog will end. And the public themselves, he's not trying to, to tell you why he's painting the blue dog or, or what all the answers are. A good painting should ask questions as much as it, it answers them. And so with this blue dog series, that's that's where he's going. Are there any high school teams now that call themselves the Blue Dogs? Not that I know of, but if there were, I'd probably try to stop them as an attorney. Um, they definitely couldn't use it as a logo. Any other questions? Thank you guys so much. I don't know if the band's going to start again, but how, how good was that band earlier? You know, they, they wrote a really special song with the blue dog that my dad really liked. And so I want to thank them so much. And thank everyone here at the museum for coming. And tomorrow I'll be giving a lecture uh, downstairs at 11 o'clock. So I'll be filling in a lot with some of the old photographs. And we'll just see what you can make it. Maybe even uh, the kids can paint their own blue dogs with their hands. Thank you all so much.